One of the best experiences of my life by far were my three years playing Division One football at Vanderbilt University. And throughout my time, I learned a lot, man. I grew a lot. I feel like in many ways I became a man or more of a man than I was when I walked in the building. And I got so much value from my time playing football in college that I want to take some of y'all behind the curtain and introduce y'all to some of the most important ideas I embraced and learned about throughout my time playing college football. Let's talk about it. The first important lesson I learned about playing college football was accountability. On the average college football team, there's 105 people, right? Not everybody's on scholarship, not everybody's a starter, not everybody's a star player, but everybody has the same goal, winning games. Now, this includes the players, it includes the staff, it includes the, the training staff, the coaches, it includes the, the physical therapists, it includes the team chaplain, it, it includes everybody, the videographers and the, and the social media team. Everybody's in alignment with having this one goal of winning more games because winning more games gets everybody closer to where they want to be. If you're a player, more games you win, probably has some better numbers or better op more opportunities to showcase your skills, which means that when you're trying to go to the next level, if that's your goal, you have more to pull from to show the scouts and to show you know NFL teams you're more worthy. You won more games, you kind of proved yourself more. If you're a coach, winning more games not only helps you recruit better players, which helps you win more games, but it gives you leverage. You know, when it comes to finding a new job, if there's a job that you want to upgrade to, becoming a head coach from a coordinator, or it also gives you a lot of power and leverage when you're talking about facility upgrades and trying to get more accommodations and benefits for athletes and more rights for, for the players. All of this happens when you win more games. And with football being one of the biggest money generating sports in college, winning more games brings so much money to universities as a whole. And it's so beneficial when that happens. So no matter what I do, I have to be accountable to everybody because my actions on a day-to-day -day basis do affect whether my team wins games or not. I may not have been a star player, far from it, right? But if I don't perform at practice, if I don't show up on time and we're missing a, a receiver to do the scout team, or if I don't show up and I'm not there to, to take care of my position on special teams, everything is thrown off. You have to realign, you have to do this, you have to do that. It's the same thing from a starter to the, the last man on the bench. Everybody has to be on one accord. It's the ultimate team sport. I have to go to class. I have to make sure I'm handling my business in the classroom and study hall and this and that because I don't want to punish the people around me by my negligence or my lack of accountability. I also think about the people back home, right? Every time I would have a game or people would see me on TV or they see anything, right? They can't believe that I'm in this environment of playing Division One football in the SEC, right? Amazing experience whether I'm catching 100 passes a year or not. It doesn't matter, right? I'm here from the neighborhood and the apartment that I grew up in, right? I know that so many people look at me as a beacon of hope. So if I'm not giving my all to this, if I'm not embracing it, if I'm not taking it seriously, if I just kind of let it be whatever and, you know, don't embrace my time there and cherish it and make the most of it, the people back home have less to look up to. The people back home may be less motivated or less confident that they can do it themselves. I have to be accountable to them. My family, they they, they don't ask me to give them anything, but what they require of me is me fighting to be my best self. And part of that is giving my all to whatever I'm in at the moment, which at the time it was football. I was accountable to so many people and myself first and foremost. Being accountable to self means I'm giving myself the best chance to be the greatest person I can be as a football player and as a man. So I'm waking up early, right? I'm doing the extra workouts. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm, I'm doing everything I need to do outside of football to make sure that all of that is taken care of and I can just go perform on the field. The second lesson I learned from playing college football was is putting differences aside. Like I said, the team is 105 people. You got coaches from different places, staff from different places, different experiences, different upbringings. The fact that you guys have a common goal, you can't afford to let little petty things get in the way. I can't go to a, a practice or a game and my teammate might have grown up in a rural south, right? He might have grown up in a, an environment where he never went to school with a black person or he never he never played with a black person. He don't he doesn't really speak my language. He may have been prejudiced in his past, right? However, we're on the same team now. I gotta be willing to put that aside and be like, yo, I will go to war for this guy. And I would. Those are my guys. We fought together. We bled, sweat, all that together, man, all year round. Yo, and this happens in basketball, any sport, right? When teams are close-knit, when they're really together and really care about each other, it makes the result and the product happen so much more effortlessly, yo. You even have some things where people might have had personal issues or things happen in their personal life. And outside of football, we might have some issues to deal with, right? But when I'm on that field, when I look in the huddle and that 
We got 10 other guys, right? It's a quarterback. You got the linemen. You got the running backs, receivers. You got everybody in there, right? Tight ends. At that point in time, we got one goal. That's to score a touchdown and to win this game. I can't afford to let things get in the way of that. So that I, you can apply this to life, man. If you got something you're working towards, you got a common goal with a group of people. When you're in the mix, right? When you're in the arena, differences don't exist. It's only one thing that we should be focused on, and that's achieving the goal. The third most important thing I learned playing college football was how to have an incredible work ethic. So my entire life, I've been a grind, I've been a hustler, my mom was a hustler, you feel what I'm saying? We always were hard workers. That was just the, the name of the game, right? Practice in high school, my boy Carl Lawson, we used to be out there with his dad, right? After practice, guess what? Everybody else might go up there and go change, go get something to eat. Nah, I gotta run sprints, I gotta run hills, I gotta catch passes after practice. Before practice, I gotta be catching passes. Before practice, I gotta do this, do that. When it was in college football, right? Catching on the jug machine, every chance you got, go catch 100 passes, right? If you drop one, do 10 push-ups. Doing routes on air with the quarterbacks, meeting up with them outside of, outside of practice, watching film, right? All of this stuff that you gotta do, take, ooh, even your body, right? Taking an ice bath, taking care of that. Going to study hall if you're struggling in class so that you can be eligible to play. When you're injured, you have to go to training an hour before team meetings in the morning. You might be in that training room at 5 a.m. But guess what? That means you got to wake up early. Man, you don't have time to not be working hard. You know one thing I learned? We put so much work in, bro. And I'm telling you, there were seasons we went three and nine, four and eight. We worked so incredibly hard, bro, to the point where I couldn't believe that we weren't winning all those games. I understand talent, right? If you play against Bama, you play against Auburn, you play against these schools, yeah, they might have more raw talent. But anytime any football player tell you, when you get on that field, you don't look at his stars from high school. You're not looking at that. You're not looking at his NFL projections. You Only thing that matters is, look, this moment right here, when it's me and you, I want to whoop you behind, bro. I'm trying to take what you got because me and my team got to eat. And when I tell you, you know how crazy, incredibly hard you and your team has to work to be trash in college football, to be three and nine, to be four and eight, you would not believe. So that reminded me, yo, it's more than just the work, bro. It's more than hard work, but hard work is, is a, a baseline. It's the minimum. You're not going to get there without the hard work. But don't let don't don't let it fool you and think that just because you work hard that it's gonna make you beat somebody else out and whatever you're doing it's not it's the baseline it's the foundation you gotta separate you gotta find things to separate you that's where the mind comes in being more intuitive being you know more savvy being whatever it is that's something I'm still working on when it comes to the music right I work my behind off now I gotta figure out how to be more savvy and how to speak to the people who look for what I make look for the kind of art i make so that i can work smarter and not just be working hard i can work smart as well but there's no excuses hard work is a minimum if you want to achieve anything hard work is a minimum you have to make sure that's the baseline to the point where it becomes a lifestyle and not just a little habit here and there not just something you got to get motivated to do now nah, you work hard because you're supposed to this one is huge this one is huge the fourth thing i learned playing college football was how to find your role and embrace it this is one of those times where you have to really manage your ego, you know, high school ball, right? Everybody on the college football team, for the most part, was that dude in high school in some way, shape or form, right? They all had a bunch of talent. They were probably in the papers a lot. They probably got a bunch of attention and, and gassed up and all of that. That's not impressive, yo. Anything you did in high school is like, OK, this is college football now. This is Division One football now. This is the this is the big leagues. Power five foot is the big league. So what are you going to do? Because now the only thing that matters now is what you do here. That's the only thing that matters now, what you do here. So, of course, you go into a season, go into training camp, go into spring ball, and everybody's super confident, bro. Don't let nobody tell you otherwise. I don't care if he's the last guy on the bench. Dog, every time I went into a training camp or a spring ball, I felt like I was the best. I felt like I was the best receiver, bro, and I always wanted to start. That's a fact. I never did. Bro, I didn't catch a single pass in my college career, but I got my letterman jacket, didn't I? I got my Letterman jacket, didn't I? You know how I got this? Finding my role and embracing it. I found my role on special teams. Every time a training camp or something, right? When I tell you I was fighting for a spot, trying to work, trying to work, trying to do this, trying to do that. And I gave it my all. And what happened was I got beat out by a better player. It's that simple. Another man beat me out. And these are my guys to this day. Shout out to Trent, shout out to Caleb, CJ, Elo, J Matt, all these people, right? Shout out to y'all. These are my guys, bro. And I can live with the fact that, yo, he was more productive than me in training camp. Or he, he caught more passes. He didn't drop this pass that I dropped, right? He ran this route better. He did better on his stock block. It's whatever, bro. I'm, I lost out on the job. Cool. What I'm going to do, cry about it? 
or I'm gonna find my role and embrace that and start doing my work. So what I did, boom, I ain't get a starting job. I ain't even getting a rotation. Damn. All right then, what we on now? Shoot, I can do special teams. I can get on kickoff team. I can get on puppet team. I can get on all this stuff. What's up? Don't be on. Let me compete. Start competing. All right. Now you want a kickoff team. Yeah, let's get it. You want pump return? You blocking on pump return? Let's get it. If it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have never saw the field at all. So what what are you going to do when things get tough? What are you going to do when when things aren't looking ideal? Are you going to just push forward and find a role? Or are you going to cry about the fact that what you want is not happening at the moment? Maybe something else is for you, or maybe it's just not your time yet. That can happen in any arena, yo. When you find your role, if you're a part of a team, in your family, in a relationship, yo, find your role and embrace that, man. There's nothing wrong. There's no shame in that, dog. I'm telling you, there's no shame in finding your role and embracing it. Because every Saturday, if I get out there for five plays, right, on special teams, cool. I might not have caught that touchdown that one of my teammates caught, but guess what? I'm there to cheer him on. Because I know that all the work that we all do together allows him to be better in this moment. It allows him to catch this pass and do this and to do that. If I would have let my ego get in the way and complained and cried and Called my parents like, man, they not give me a sh I would have never gotten that jacket, man. And now this thing lives with me forever, and I take so much pride in those experiences I had. Find your role, man. Now, this last lesson is one of the most important things I've ever learned in my life to this day. Knowing when to walk away. So, football was never my favorite sport to this day. Basketball is my favorite sport. Um, I'll post another video later about how I even ended up playing football in the first place and especially in college But I got to a point where I want to say it was spring ball my junior year And initially I went out there on fire. I was super motivated. I was excited. I'm all in all in all in Maybe halfway through spring ball. I started to feel a little different and it began to feel like a chore to me It began to feel like a job. I wasn't understanding what it was I didn't know if I was just in a funk or if I didn't know what was going on right called my mom Yo, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of not feeling this football thing anymore. Like, what should I do, right? My mom first told me to stick it out, right? Because one thing she'd always imparted into us was when you start something, you finish it. You don't quit. You're not walking away from football in the middle of spring ball, bro. That's not how I raised you. You're right. Let me stick it out because this might be a little phase and I might, when summer camp starts, training camp starts, and I might love this thing again i might really want to play because for me it wasn't the game of football that i lost love for it was playing football that i lost love for i still watch it the same to this day still watch it still love it still study it still my god all my friends in the pros i love watching them play i love the fact that they're living their dreams doing that it wasn't my dream you know what i'm saying and who knows if i would have made it even if it was my dream but it wasn't my dream so i come back i stay i stick it out my junior year and i'm giving it my all i'm not slacking i'm giving everything i have and i really really gave everything i had to that season it didn't go the way i thought it would go um didn't play as much as i did the year before even on special teams that was fine with me you know i was able to embrace that and it was what it was right so we go on holiday break and we come back after holiday break. And of course, when you get back from that, there's always that first team meeting in the beginning of the spring semester that kind of sets the tone for the entire year. I woke up that morning, man. We meeting might have been at 6.30 maybe. Still torn on what I wanted to do before that, right? Woke up and started to get ready for the meeting. And at that point, I had contemplated on this for months and months. And something told me not to go. Some told me that was it. It was it was time for me to walk away from the game. And I don't know if it was God talking to me. I don't know what you want to call it, but I knew in my heart of hearts it was time for me to walk away. Here's the main reason why. It's one of the best decisions I made in my life and one of the most mature decisions I made in my life. I was still, I'll say, 90 to 95% invested in playing football in college. I could have gone out there for my entire senior season, gone through the motions at 95%, had my senior day, maybe did a little pro day, workout and potentially because my size and whatever got some little free age opportunity if that happened i could have done that right but i knew when i looked in the mirror i could never live with myself if i was given anything less than 110 120 percent because back to that accountability piece when i look at the guys around me and i look at trent shurfield right one of the hardest workers i've ever met in my life and somebody that when i look at him i know he loves the game of football so much and to him, this is a meal ticket. It's more than just a game. Yes, yeah, the game he loves to play, but this is something that's gonna help take care of his family, bro. He grew up in poverty. I knew that to him. It's almost life and death to people like that. So I can't look at Trent and say and say I love you as a as a brother, bro. We fly boys forever, right? I can't look at you and know that I'm not giving the 120 when you're giving everything. You're emptying yourself every day to try to make it to the league and win these games. 
I knew that I could never live with myself. I wasn't raised like that. I was raised to be the best I could be. I was raised to give everything to what I'm doing. The crazy part, nobody would have known except me. A lesser man would have still gone through with it. A lesser man would have just went through the motions at 95% because not a single person in the organization would have known I was half-assing it or giving it 95% except myself when I looked in the mirror and I strapped up my pads every day and put my helmet on. And that would have been a disservice and it would have been disrespectful to myself, to my teammates, to the entire staff, to my mother and to my community. It was time for me to walk away. And I made peace with it and I was blessed to say, I'm blessed to say I left the game of football, no major injuries, you know, no brain injuries, no concussions, healthy, still able to still work out the same. I mean, my workout regimen hasn't really changed. I still work out like crazy. I'm at peace with the game, yo. Anytime somebody asks me about my, my football career, my experience, I had such an amazing time. I made so many great memories, so many lifelong bonds, and I would never take it for granted. If I had to go back, I would do it again. That's something that I could never replicate. I have yet to find anything that magic yet. Music is, is my magic now, and it's a different kind of magic. Just as great, but it's a different kind of magic. But that specific kind of magic that I felt playing college football at Vanderbilt University and going throughout that entire process was amazing. And I would never take it for granted. So I want you guys, anybody who's looking to play college sports, anybody who's just looking to do anything in life, man, no matter what your situation is, I want you to focus on extracting value. I don't want you to focus on what's wrong with the situation, right? I want you to focus on extracting value from everything you do. So for me, like I said, the accountability piece, putting differences aside, work ethic, you know what I'm saying? Finding your role, knowing when to walk away, all of this stuff can just add benefits to your life that are not hard to come by. They're not hidden, they're not reserved for any one particular person. You just have to focus on extracting value versus problems. So shout out to Vanderbilt football. It's going to be anchored down forever. You feel what I'm saying? It ain't no questions about that. Um, I'm excited about the next season and what we got going on. So salute to all the guys, man. That's all I got for y'all. I'm out.